uh, again, thank you for joining. I, I, we wanted to uh, at, um, go through a number of, of subjects today. Um, part of our CPAT discovery webinar series is uh, meant to help uh, keep our clients and uh, and our uh, and our colleagues in the industry informed on different methodologies and best practices we're seeing in the industry, as well as um, giving updates on on what CPAT is doing. And, and, and when we see new and in, informative information that is out there that we think would be helpful to you, we like to also present that. So today, um, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start with talking about some of the ways we see distance learning uh, being applied in the cabin crew training um, uh, um, arena to help save money. As, as many uh, airlines ha have already implemented distance learning for their pilot side of the house and saved money over many years, it's not as prevalent in the, in the uh, cabin crew side. And there's, there's two ways to use distance learning, as, as we all know. You can use distance learning to replace regulatory hours of training in the classroom and bring that out to distance learning, or you can just use it as an augmented training tool. Today, we're going to focus on, on what we're seeing clients utilize distance learning for in an augmented situation, not as a replacement. That doesn't mean that you can't utilize this as a replacement to regulatory training, but today our focus of our discussion is going to be augmentation. And we're going to talk about two main scenarios. One is creating an assessment tool in uh, utilizing a week of pre-class uh, training as a way to screen um, you know, strong and, and uh, uh, strong students and weak students. And we'll, we'll go into that scenario with Steven because he has a lot of experience with that. And then the second one is to create a pre-study curriculum that allows your students to be better prepared for the day that they start uh, their in-class training. And then the third scenario, we'll talk about the benefits of blending those two together uh, to get the most out of your um, out of your e-learning um, services. I'll show you a little bit about what CPAT, uh, how CPAT Invent will allow you to create those scenarios and curriculums to support those scenarios. Um, and then Stephen uh, uh, just returned from the FAA Cabin Safety Research Workshop. And there was a lot of really cutting edge and, um, and uh, uh, advanced um, uh, um, subjects taught at that, that I thought uh, it would be really important to bring that out today and have a discussion about it. So you can see some of the, of the, uh, um, of the cutting edge things that the regulators are working on for improving uh, cabin crew training. We'll finish up with some questions and answers. As, as uh, Ms. Amy mentioned, you can uh, type your questions or um, you can, um, you, we can have you uh, uh, speak on, on the uh, webinar. Uh, if you'd like to voice your question, it's no problem. At any time, don't, be, uh, don't forget, you can raise your hand as, you, as, as we go through the webinar. This is meant to be a discussion of a webinar. So we, at, yeah, at any time, don't be, don't be uh, um, hesitant to interrupt uh, when, I'm, when I'm speaking. Um, and in fact, I think we, let's double check here. I'm just gonna make sure we don't have any hands raised at the moment. All right, so, so let's start with uh, discussing what we talked about is ways to reduce your training costs uh, utilizing distance learning. Um, before I go there, let's. I'm going to do a quick review of, of everything that CPAT does for those of you who aren't as familiar with, uh, with CPAT's portfolio of products. So we organize everything we do into four main pillars, and that's CPAT Access. That's our learning uh, portal. That includes our learning management system or delivery platform, um, both online and offline, offline using the CPAT mobile app. We have a student verification system that's a biometric verification system and our universal API that connects our systems up to other training systems. CPAT Instruct, which is some of the stuff we'll be looking at today, that includes aircraft systems for pilots uh, and cabin crew, general subjects and safety subjects for pilots and cabin crew, interactive diagrams uh, um, uh, to learn uh, advanced procedures or advanced systems um, for the pilots, procedural training for both pilots and cabin crew, 
And I'll go into in a second a, a full description of what we have in our cabin crew, crew um, inventory. CPAT Invent, that's our content design software program that allows you to, to build new, new courseware inside of CPAT and then be able to deliver it as well as modify the, uh, the courseware that CPAT has, has created or that you can create. And then finally, CPAT Assist, this is our industry leading um, student support and admin support services. So when you look at CPAT's um, uh, cabin crew training portfolio, it's, it's organized into three different um, categories. The aircraft systems or cabin crew, uh, cabin crew aircraft system courses, that includes uh, CPAT's aircraft systems courses for spe fleet specific systems knowledge that is relevant to cabin crew. And that includes you know, everything that you would need to know, communication systems, uh, escape path lighting systems, um, uh, cabin control panels, oxygen systems. So it's not taking a pilot aircraft system course and then modifying it to, for, to, to fit into a cabin crew curriculum. It's actually specifically designed aircraft system courses for cabin crew. Um, and that includes the, the full fleet spectrum, Boeing's, Airbus, uh, ATR, CRJ, and Embraer aircraft uh, fleet types. Then we also have our library of cabin crew safety courses that Steven has built. And this is always growing. We're gonna be expanding dramatically, but that, that includes in, uh, interactive and in-depth safety and, and general subjects for cabin crew, including safety demonstration uh, lessons, dangerous goods lessons or hazmat lessons, first aid, crew resource management, security, emergency procedures. Some of the things Steven's working on is also fatigue risk management, uh, and uh, SMS and some other programs that are gonna be added to this library at any time. Um, it would be nice also if you have some that you would suggest that we add, it, you know, just chat into the, uh, the, the, uh, um, the webinar here and we'll add it to our list of things to review. Um, and then finally, our, our cabin crew uh, interactive trainers, that includes our interactive 3D trainer, which I'll demonstrate to, for you today. And then in the near future, our interactive 3D door trainers. And so we'll talk a little bit more about those, but I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what CPAT does in our portfolio products for cabin crew. So let's get into those, how to reduce your training costs with distance learning solutions um, for cabin crew training. So as we talked about, there are some subjects that lend themselves to, um, to distance learning. And they would they work well, and, and that's whether that's a regulatory uh, replacement for classroom training or whether that's just augmentation training. Some some courses such as hazmat, basic in doc subjects, general ground aircraft ground systems courses, those those lend themselves well for being outside of the classroom or being used online or offline for training. Whereas other courses, they, they would not apply very well to distance learning, such as CRM or hands-on first aid. And we know that. The, the discussion today is about those subjects where we either can, can move them completely out of the classroom, or we can provide augmentation training prior to the students get there so that they have a better training outcome when they come there. Um, now, Stephen put together this, uh, this review as data shows that 23% of cabin crew training students don't progress past training. So we lose about 23% of the, uh, of the new hire candidates. And that's an industry-wide average. Your average could be higher or lower, but you know, we, losing any, any potential candidate at this time is, um, is one, expensive on our training budget, but two, you know, we're, we're, we want them to be successful and it's, you know, it's important to be able to keep the, the, uh, the dedicated human resources that we found that want to be in this industry and make them successful, right? Um, so some of the benefits is you can, uh, by utilizing distance learning, as we're going to show you, is you can recognize stronger or weaker candidates when you're, as a screening process, you can you can offload some of your um, some of your um, uh, training uh, from the classroom and save money on travel costs, hotel expenses per diem, and you can also free up some of your training assets to do other training events, such as your facilitators, your classrooms, 
you know, your, your hard equipment, you know, such as, you know, first aid training rooms and, and such. But uh, so let's talk about how I would do that. And in, in our scenarios, I'm going to actually review some of this and Stephen's going to expound on it from his experience. So as we talked about, one of the things that's so costly is that we, we have students that come into our classrooms um, as, as new hire cabin crew, and they, they don't know what they're getting into, and we don't know their commitment to this industry until they arrive at the training center. And now we spent a lot of money getting them. So, so we can use the uh, uh, distance learning to create an assessment system by giving certain subjects and giving certain tests and checking certain um, punctuality using distance learning. So Stephen, um, in, in your experience with your training at the, both the 121 and the 142 level training other airlines students, how could I use um, a, a week of assessment prior to um, students coming to class and what benefits would I see from doing that in, you know, in, in, from your experience? Well, Greg, that's a, that's a very good question. In my experience, we don't know a lot about the new hires that are coming into our class. Uh, we don't understand and know their study habits. We don't know their level of dedication. So what we would use is a seven-day or a five-day or a 40-hour introductory course. Maybe it covers airport codes, city codes, a little bit of aircraft parts, Twenty hour clock, things that don't need to be taught in the classroom. And we could assign them this course prior to their arrival. We can have them take a test. And if they pass the test, generally speaking, it's you know, 80% or above, then we know they have the skills, the study habits, and the dedication where we don't have to bring them in, give them the same kind of training, the same subjects in a classroom, and have them fail and score maybe a 62% on a written exam, and we have to send them home. So we're able to spend uh, a lot of our training budget for later on down the training. It's very little risk for an airline to provide some form of online training, give some form of assessment, because we don't have to pay for hotel and per diem and transportation and so on. Plus, number two, it's a great way for us to weed out the chaff, if you will. For those who are not going to make it, we can free up a seat for someone who maybe has more dedication. Sure. So, so as you mentioned, you're 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 able to determine, you know, without utilizing this tool, without having to spend you know expensive training dollars or travel dollars to determine whether they, you know, I mean, a lot of, a lot of, you know, the, a lot of uh, new hire uh, cabin crew people, they have a dream of what being a uh, flight attendant is like. And then when they arrive, they don't realize, well, it's, it's a lot of hard work and it's a lot of dedication. And as we talked about, you have to be punctual. So I can kind of test that stuff out when utilizing this tool. Is that correct? That's correct. You could we could have a, a exam or quiz or assessment at the end, and have a a threshold maybe ninety percent as a pass rate or eighty percent as a pass rate. Have them take this assessment at the very end. It's a non jeopardy event. It's not a regulatory event, but we will know from their test results have they really and truly studied and do they have what it takes to become a licensed cabin crew member. Yeah, absolutely. I could I could even use this if you think about it, Stephen. I could use this even as a pre-hire assessment tool before I even make that commitment. You know, um, and I mean, again, there's 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 almost no cost to this. I'm, it's an internally created curriculum utilizing CPAC courseware as well as developed courseware by the by the airline utilizing CPAC Invent, and I can you know I can get all those benefits even you know of of screening those students before they before I even have to make a commitment, whether it's dollars or whether it's employment, right? You're exactly right. And there are some airlines receive about 16,000 applications a day for oh, maybe yeah. one of 40 seats. So it's very, very competitive. And using a, a, a screening tool such as what we're talking about here would kind of help to weed out some of those that may right. not make it. 
So, so now let's look at, 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 at um, scenario two, and that's for the airline that um, they don't want to use this as a screening tool, but they, as you talked about in your past, boy, I sure would like to give them as, me, as much of a chance to be successful when they show up at a very complex and intense training um, uh, uh, course uh, by providing them with, you know, uh, you know pre-study material, uh, you know, a chance to, um, to chance to get ahead of the more complex material on their own time at no cost to the airline by providing them, you know, a, a week of, of pre-study material. Can you describe how airlines do that or what the, and how the benefits are, uh, uh, how they play out for the airline? Sure. So for an example is maybe we have a very complex uh, subject matter. It might be with um, the aircraft parts, parts of the aircraft. Uh, they need to know, uh, for example, what is an engine cowling? What is an aileron? What is a flap? What is a vertical stabilizer? And even something like that. So if they can get ahead of the ball by studying this material ahead of time, and they are preloading their knowledge bank. So when they go into the classroom, they will have a much higher success rate if they've already seen the material. It might even be as complicated, for example, as to uh, some of the more modern ovens that are in galleys. They're complicated pieces of equipment. If they can master how to program a steam oven on a Boeing 787, when they go to the classroom and learn this, again, they are preloaded with this material and they'll have a great understanding and a firm foundation. Uh, and even go down to maybe the basics of first aid. If you understand the basics of first aid, and maybe you have uh, uh, an eight hour distance learning course on first aid, then you go into the classroom for the hands-on, now you have a really firm foundation. Yeah, absolutely. And and we've seen this on the pilot side for many, many years where things like, you know, non-regulatory basic in-doc subjects are, are put out there prior to the student arriving. Um, as you talked about, CPAT's aircraft system courses for cabin crew, you could, you could push that out to the, you know, the pre-study course, let them be ready so that when they come into the classroom and you're, you're having a discussion about you know, um, you know, aircraft uh, configurations, you know, uh, lighting, oxygen, things like that, they're heads up versus heads down trying to, you know, you know, under, you know, understand all of this there, as we talk about, you've, you've mentioned many times, getting their situational awareness as big as possible, so that they're actually part of the class versus, you know, deer in the headlights, because the material so new and coming at them have never seen any of it. Now, um, go ahead. I'm sorry, Stephen. Right. From a, from a facilitator standpoint, if they are preloaded with material, for example, talking about maybe the aircraft's oxygen system for passengers, if they are preloaded with this information and they understand it and we verify it by way of a quiz, for example, they go into the classroom, they're watching me in the presentation on the screen versus having to be down and taking all their notes. They've already done that. So for me, if they're able to watch my presentation, listen to what I have to tell them, their note taking is greatly reduced because they've already taken notes back home when they were doing the distance learning course. So it saves us a lot of frustration so we can free up our time for more in-person teaching and drilling down to those deeper subjects versus having to continuously answer questions because they saw it in a manual, they saw it in a handout, they saw it on the screen, and they start bombarding the facilitator with questions. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and and what what we saw in um, at, I'll date myself. I've been in pilot training since the '80s. What we saw as distance learning became more of a standard. You know, especially with this pre-distance learning type stuff in the in the in the pilot side of flight operations was a, a, a dramatic increase in successful outcomes. I had okay. a lot less remedial training. I didn't have to send back people back through ground school because they got 79 on the system uh, on their on their basic knowledge test. You know, everybody had a much more successful position, which is which is important to us because we're asking these people to come to work for our airline and we want them to be successful. You know, we're we're not hiring people to fail, we're hiring them to be successful. And by utilizing this, 
you know, you should see a much higher increase of successful outcomes, as well as a significant reduction in, um, in uh, new hire attrition. Um, That's correct. Um, all right. It, um, and um, with, um, just, sorry, guys, we just had. Um, and um, so we did have a question. It, Stephen, I'm going to ask you a question. That, it, um, thank you, folks, for, for submitting questions. At, and again, happy to take them at any time during the seminar. It said, if an application is taking, can, taking a course can they, it, during this pre-study, if they're taking the course, can they go back and they review the material? Is there any reason to shut it off the day they get there? Well, no, they, could, I, they were able to go back and review material as much as they wish, because remember, they're drinking from the proverbial fire hose. Mm -hmm. And there's so much material being given to them that if they have distance learning, they can go back and maybe in the hotel room that evening or wherever, kind of review the material if they feel they don't have an understanding on the subject uh, well enough to pass an assessment. So being able to review material is great. Absolutely. And, and, and one of the things that we haven't talked about, and we'll go back to this, we'll go to the next scenario. One of the things we haven't talked about is new hire. Let me ask you this. Um, you know, a lot of the young folks that come to start with us, this is their first real serious job, right? And it's an important job to them. Most of them view this as a career and a lifelong dream. How nervous are these people when they show up, Stephen? Uh, they're, they're very nervous. They, they show up. Everybody is dressed professionally. Uh, maybe they've been coached on how to dress, how to do their hair, how to do their makeup, their shoes. And for the first couple of days, it's very, very quiet yeah. until such time they break off in their own teams. They become melded one group. Uh, yeah. They study together, become lifelong friends. So yeah, they absolutely. are nervous. But, be they're nervous because they don't know what to expect. Exactly. So their stress level is high, but by giving them this pre-study material, they're able to do it in their own time, in their own environment under a more relaxed environment. So they're able to absorb the material instead of day one, you know, as we all did the day we were first hired at the airline, right? And right. Uh, we were all a little bit scared and overwhelmed. You know, this, you know, you can use this in many ways to, to, uh, to, to affect that successful training outcome, right? So. And, and again, also they may get into the, into the meat potatoes of the learning and say, hey, this is really not for me. Yeah, and they, they would weed themselves out, which, you know, prevents us from having to be a little bit tough and weed them out of class. Yeah. And so that brings us to scenario three, which 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 I think is the right one, which is you utilize both scenarios. Um, you utilize this as a way to, to, to test the strength and the weakness of candidates and allow the weaker candidates to be identified, whether they self-identify and, and decide this isn't for them or whether they, we identify them by saying, boy, it's just not, it doesn't seem that this is a good fit before we spend critical dollars or take up a classroom seat where somebody that is stronger can be in there. Um, the other one is we're able to, you know, by utilizing both scenarios, I'm able to put these together uh, and, and now provide all of them with the ability to pre-study in their own time, their own environment, um, and in a relaxed method to absorb the material. So when they come in day one, you know, their, their heads are up, they're not overstressed, they know what's coming at them, you know, and, and we can really be, um, you know, uh, 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 empowering them to have a successful training. And, and for us, we end up with, with, uh, with better numbers on, on successful flight attendants, making it through training and making it to the line, right? So, yeah. All right. Thank so let, let's talk about how, how does CPAT empower our clients to do that? So I'm going to go over, um, Stephen, and I'm going to show a little bit about um, CPAT's. We talked about CPAT's courseware, right? And in that, in that courseware, we have aircraft systems for, for cabin crew specifically designed, and Stephen built those. We have a whole library of, of, of cabin crew safety courses, uh, which is continually expanding, as we talked about. And, um, and um, and then we have some, some 3D environment training tools, such as a three-dimensional cabin or a 3D doors that are coming. Those are being built by our software team. But 
in regards to the um, in regards to that courseware, I want to create a pre-study curriculum. I can I can do a number of things with Invent. One, I can take CPATS courseware and put that into a pre-study curriculum, aircraft systems, all those general subjects. I can actually modify those. So if you don't like the way Stephen or let's, well, I don't mean to say it that way. Um, if, well, actually, if, if we all have training cultures at our airlines, right? And a lot, most of our airlines are highly experienced in the way they want certain things trained, such as, you know, first aid or cabin safety or, you know, cabin safety demonstration. The way that Stephen designed it is from a wealth of experience that follows regulatory requirements for each subject. But you may say as the airline, I want to, you know, this has to match the way our culture teaches first aid, for example. So CPAT Invent empowers our clients to modify our courseware in any way they want. You can change the, the, the narrative, you can change the text, you can change the images, you can add or remove slides. And I'll, I'll do a quick show of that uh, for, for you. You can also create new material inside CPAT Invent using CPAT's imagery and material. So let's say I'm going to do a pre-study curriculum, Stephen, and I'm going to include in there CPAT's aircraft system courses. I'm going to include in there CPAT's first aid course, but I'm going to change it to match my airline's culture. And then I'm also going to create my own, uh, you know, let's say, uh, you know, cabin etiquette course or flight attendant professionalism course. And I can do that quickly inside of CPAT and Invent. And also I can upload, I might have created a PowerPoint uh, uh, course over here, like, like, like you've done hundreds of times, Stephen. And I can upload that into CPAT and Invent, put all that into a quick curriculum and assign it out there for a whole week. Um, but, and, and Stephen, anything, I know that you've done this many times, but anything you want to add to that, that that's how we quickly, we can create a curriculum, take a day or two at the most to get this built and, and submit it out. Right. One thing I like about it is the ability to customize, uh, maybe there's a different procedure and I'm going to go way down there. Maybe we, there's a course on service on first class service or business class service. There might be several different ways from what I was taught many moons ago of how to conduct it. So the end user is able to modify that a little bit and tailor it to their particular right. procedures, well, which is a great thing. I like it. Yeah, let's go. Let's go over and take a look. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and, and, and jump over to the LMS, Stephen. And um, I am going to let's start with the, what the students would see when they log into a curriculum. So from a student portal, and again, this would be branded for the airline, it would say, you know, airline ABC or an airplane or whatever the airline would like to be the log student login. When that student logs in, they'll see their curriculum down here. And I've got one that says cabin crew training. This could say uh, cabin crew pre free study training program. When they open it up, they'll see their different courses or their different uh, courses. In the courses, if you open that up, there's a list of subjects and the subjects have um, or subjects or lessons and in the subjects are slides, right? So um, as we go along here, I'm going to show you how quickly it is to make changes to this so I can modify it or add or create new slides. So let's open one of these first aid uh, lessons that you that you had done, Stephen. And so um, I'll take uh, flight attendant uh, training illness. Um, yeah, and so um, again, uh, folks, for those of you who haven't used Invent, you can utilize this tool to modify the curriculums that we've created or the lessons that we've created or create your own lessons within CPAT Invent. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, go ahead and, and start this lesson here so we can see what it looks like. Passengers bring with them their physical and mental health conditions, and flight attendants are expected to provide first aid for sick passengers. So as CPAT lessons always do, they start with an introduction. By the end of this lesson, followed by a, um, a uh, objective page, and then we go into to our begin, scenarios. Imagine this scenario. Um, in it is 90 minutes into a four-hour flight, and drinks and snacks have been served. As you walk down the so Stephen has built scenarios in this one and the so first I'm section go of the lesson show you how to modify quickly this first aid course 
as an example, let's say I'm an airline and I like this, but I want to make changes, right? So let me go ahead and jump out of the student portal. And I'm going to go over here to the admin portal and I'm going to modify that lesson real quick. And so I'm going to log in as an administrator. I'm going to go ahead and go to lessons. I'm going to check first aid. And I said first aid illness. I'm going to go ahead and create a new version of that because I want to create it for my airline. And, um, and now what's going to happen is, is the, the system is going to create me a new lesson uh, called uh, first aid illness. And it just takes a second for it to make that transfer over. And um, give me just a second. Let's see. There it is, first aid illness. So what it's done is Stephen has duplicated my previous lesson and now it's opening this lesson. Um, and so I can save it as a new version. Let's say now I'm gonna call this ABC Airlines first aid illness lesson course. And I'm gonna go down to that second uh, slide or that slide that we were talking about, which is the scenario. And as we talked about, uh, we have a narrative that is, um, that is in regard to the scenario, I can at this point, I can add slides um, by just coming up here and, and, and selecting a, a slide format, um, a, you know, pictures and graphs, I can add PDFs, I can add videos, I can add anything I want. I can change slides, um, I can reorder them, I can add or delete them quickly, or I can, well that, he, he, he really liked what I was saying there. So let's go back to our, um, but we're, we're, what we're talking about is a person on the airplane that has, that's having a panic attack. In this situation, I can even change the imagery um, by adding my own image or utilizing any of the over 2000 pages of images that I have uh, that CPAT has provided in the image library. But in this case, I just want to change the narration. So I'm going to go on down here. And I'm gonna say uh, the first section of this lesson covers to have to handle common physical and mental illness passengers may be experienced. Um, uh, let's say on a flight to Tokyo. You know, and um, it, just something as simple as that. I wanna come in here and I wanna quickly uh, re-narrate that. I'm gonna tell it, uh, go ahead and uh, give me a new text to speech on this. I'm gonna say, let's use it in English. I'm gonna select the same speech that we were using before, and I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to re-narrate that. The first section of the lesson covers how to handle common physical and mental illnesses passengers may experience on a flight to Tokyo. And These so um, I, I had a little bit of a pause there because I forgot to get rid of this, uh, uh, forgot to get rid of that period. And, um, and now it would actually be the way we wanted it. Uh, which would be there. The first section of the lesson covers how to handle common physical and mental illnesses passengers may experience on a flight to Tokyo. So as quickly as that, I'm able to re-narrate it. Um, English is the aviation language, but let's say we have special speakers. I can do this in over a hundred different languages that I may want to, uh, that I may want to convert this. I can convert the text and the audio to that. So very, very quickly am I able to do that and create new lessons. Um, so that's how I would modify that, um, that, uh, that material. Uh, and Stephen, anything you wanna add on how quickly and easy we can do that? It's great. You could even change some of the images. You could change the graphics. You could make, instead of the gentleman we see here, we might have a child who's also a little bit of motion sickness I mean, the, the possibilities are almost limitless. You can add your text. You could add several different photos. You could add a diagram if you need to. It's, it's a great product. Absolutely. And, and then I can, once I have my lessons identified, well, you know, let's say I want to add cabin crew. Uh, I want to add, um, you know, aircraft systems. I want to add, um, you know, uh, the, some of the general subjects that, that CPAT has created. I want to add my own. I can then now go in here and quickly create a new curriculum and drag all of those courses in. Let's say it's, it's, uh, it's um, you know, a flight attendant candidate 
um, testing curriculum. And then, so I can do this very quickly with CPAT and make those assignments. As we also mentioned, um, we've got the aircraft systems, we've got general subject or cabin safety subjects in our library, but you also have the ability to create cabin familiarization lessons where there will be hotspots, which are you know spots that I can interact with in the cabin. And I can quickly go in and, as a, and, and learn um, the location of, let's say, safety items, or I can follow a process to pre-flight a cabin. And so let me show you what that looks like. And it's probably quicker for me to show you in a video format. So let me jump on over here and show that. In this video, we will demonstrate how easy it is to create three-dimensional cabin lessons that will provide students with an interactive and immersive training experience. With this tool, CPAD Invent allows you to quickly and easily develop a 3D training experience. Students will be able to interact and become familiar with your cabins using their current devices versus spending limited training funding on expensive VR equipment. In addition, administrators can develop unlimited training scenarios that are specifically designed for your airline. Let me show you how easy it is. After logging into CPAD Invent, simply create a new lesson by clicking on this plus sign to create a lesson with a title and a few other fields that are already populated here for our demo purposes. Now that the lesson is created, create a 3D cabin page for the desired fleet. This takes us to the 3D cabin, where we now need to describe the objectives for the students and create the desired hotspots. This 3D environment allows more than one hotspot, but for today we'll just be demonstrating a single hotspot, which is to locate the fire extinguisher. Now define what you would like the student to do once they select the hotspot. Because the hotspots in the lesson are interactive, Click on the interactive activity icon to tell the lesson that the hotspot is an interactive graphic. Now select a Halon fire extinguisher from the CPAT Invent Aviation Asset Library. Next, add a smaller hotspot to your current image by creating a green box where you would like the student to click. Then create a task such as asking the student to check the gauge of the fire extinguisher. Now that the fire extinguisher hotspot and objectives have been created, we are ready to place the hotspot in the right location inside the cabin. Today, we will be placing it in the overhead bin near door number one, where the Halon fire extinguisher is typically located. Once the hotspot is placed in your desired location, we are ready to save the lesson and generate a preview. Students are now able to move about the cabin and locate the created hotspot, using the objectives on the right-hand panel to locate the fire extinguisher. Once students select the hotspot, they check the gauge inside the green zone, as directed by the task instructions. Now that the objective is complete, the student will be ready to move on to the next section. In this video, we were able to show you how easy it is to create interactive 3D cabin environments with different hotspots to enhance your cabin crew training. Contact us today to get started. So, so that the cabin uh, hotspot tool is a very, very powerful. Flight safety and efficiency Oops, me, uh, also depend on the that. pilot's me, ability uh, to carry out. Um, it's a very, very powerful tool that is customizable to each airline's, um, each airline's um, uh, uh, training objectives when it comes to cabin assessments familiarization. Every, and when CBAT delivers this, the actual layout of the cabin interior will match or be customized to your, um, to your uh, airline's layout and configuration. So um, just a very powerful tool. Um, so that's, that's what uh, uh, our discussion today about um, scenarios that can save you money when it comes to um, screening or uh, augmentation training and some of the tools that CPAP provides. At the end of this lesson, I can answer some questions, but I wanted to give, or at the end of this, the webinar, I can answer some questions, but I wanted to give Stephen a few minutes to discuss. He just got back from a full week training at the FAA's uh, Cabin Safety Research Workshop uh, with, with many, many people from the industry, many airlines attending, and talking about 
the best practices and cutting edge um, theory uh, and, and philosophy for uh, cabin crew training. So I'm gonna hand the, the, uh, um, the floor over to Stephen because we thought it'd be a really good benefit for him to give you a briefing on what we're seeing uh, as, uh, as up and coming in cabin safety uh, training. All right, thanks, Greg. Uh, it, was, it was a week of very, very intense training. And if you've ever heard of the Civil Aer Aeronautical Medical Institute, known as CAMI out of Oklahoma City, this is where a lot of research takes place uh, for not only uh, flight attendants, for aircraft, for pilots, also for a lot of human factors. So if there's any kind of a regulation that comes down the pike that needs to be changed, they have to do several years of human factors research to determine whether or not this regulation should be changed. So uh, being there for an entire week, I was able to experience ditching. We did some evacuations. We did some firefighting. We've done uh, some studies and tests on some biodynamics. I'll get into those here in just a second. But here's what we're able to find in talking with the FAA cabin safety inspectors, the researchers, the PhDs that are up there as well, and industry colleagues over, over dinner. What we found out is Passengers are really ignoring their pre-departure safety briefings. Even though we give them a safety video, we do an in-person pre-departure safety briefing. They have the safety cards. No one is really paying attention to that. That's creating a safety of flight issue. Also, with cabin crew fatigue is continuing to be a problem with these now ultra long haul flights. I think one airline is able to do from Sydney to JFK nonstop, approaching about 19 hours. And they're realizing even with augmented crews that at the end of that flight, the last couple of hours, that cabin crew fatigue is still a problem irrespective of having these very nice crew rest facilities. Uh, as far as ditching and water survival, excuse me, a lot of those procedures are changing. They were last researched back in the 1960s, and the industry realized there's a need for us to revisit water landings, water survival, ditching. I'll go into those here in just a little bit. Also for the evacuation procedures, going down the escape slides, going down the wing, going down the overing exits, a lot of those procedures are changing. One of the big issues with the latest round of uh, aircraft evacuations is passengers tend to bring all of their personal effects from the overhead bin and evacuate with that. And that's causing some issues of getting everybody out of the aircraft safely. And also the lithium ion battery fires. Now that the average person, and we learned this while we were there, the average person has five lithium ion battery power devices on their person at any given time. So you can imagine an Airbus A350 or a 380 or a 777 with 300 passengers, just do the math. And the dangers of these lithium ion battery fires and the issues in fighting those now are off the charts. So I'll give you a little bit of update on that here in just a couple of seconds. And, and, and I'm gonna move on and I know we've got to move kind of quickly through the rest of the slides, Stephen. When when you look at these subjects and, and your expertise on them, my uh, can you uh, uh, we want to make sure that everybody understands our courses will start to incorporate what we're learning at these webinars. So these our courses will be updated with a lot of this information. So wanted to make sure you knew that we're we're doing this for two purposes: one, to inform our clients, but two, to make sure our our cabin safety courses are are as up to date and cutting edge as possible. Exactly. So one of the things we talked about was for uh, biodynamics, and the FAA has a great cabin simulator. They have a couple, as a matter of fact. This one's called a flex sim. It's able to pitch up and down, simulate a landing gear collapse, and uh, they're able to do a little bit of research. So the FAA was able, asked to uh, come up with 500 people. These are non-airline people. There are people off the street, various age brackets various demographics, uh, genders, and so on. And they were able to watch a safety video. And after the safety video, they were put into a simulated flight and had a rapid decompression where the mass dropped. We had the rubber jungle. And the FAA learned through several of these um, events back to back 
72% could not don the mask correctly. Even after watching a safety video, watch the flight attendant demonstrate it, they still could not, 72% could not don a mask. And that is a safety of flight issue. And this came out from one of the airlines that had an explosive decompression, the mask dropped and people had the mask just on their mouth, not on their mouth and nose. So that raised some eyebrows during the investigation. So the NTSB tasked the FAA to do the research. How can we better explain how to use oxygen masks and so on? They had another group of 500 people, 10 groups of 50 each. They were shown the same video and they had a simulated water landing or ditching. 77% of those who participated could not put on a life jacket in a seated position. And the FAA is wondering why, what's causing this? Because when we demonstrate the safety video, we're doing it standing up. We're not doing it sitting down. So the biodynamics are a little bit different. So based on all this research, they are wondering if the videos and safety demonstrations should be somehow modified to show how to don a life jacket at a seated position. Yeah. And so Another Steven, group, oh, sorry, the, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no. So when you when you're when we're talking about CAMI, what's really interesting to me is it's that that, that we I know we refer to the FAA a lot, but this is really applying. We have it's a full international uh, group of at the right. workshop. You have people from all over the world, the IASA Airlines, um, we do you know, uh, um, ICAO based uh, rules airlines. And so um, I, I know that we're uh, we're moving on time here. So uh, if you wouldn't mind, Stephen, I'll take you to the next subject. OK, go right ahead. Okay, for cabin crew fatigue, take a look at some of these figures here that lack of quality of sleep affects 95% of cabin crew. And if you're accustomed to getting eight hours of sleep and you have only now seven hours of sleep, cumulative that equals to having one ounce of alcohol. And these are again research over at Cami. The worst fatigue that occurs is a transcontinental flight of about five hours overnight. When you land and you arrive after flying all night from California to New York, your functionality, if you will, equals to having two or three ounces of alcohol per hour. That is how much the fatigue affects you. They're even talking about a 14 and a half plus hour flight. Even with augmented crews, you're in a crew rest. If you sleep four hours and come out of the crew rest, you have what's known as an equal blood alcohol level of 0.12 and it's 0.13 if it's nighttime. So if you're a six hour sleeper and you normally have eight hours, when you wake up, you can have a 0 0.05 equal blood alcohol level and you can kind of see for four hours. So they're talking about how do we alleviate a lot of these fatigues with cabin crew and they're thinking the crew rest. Well, the crew rest could be a noisy place. There's one airline that had the crew rest installed above the mid cabin lavatories. Every time a toilet flushed, it would wake up a cabin crew member. So they had to kind of disable those lavatories and lock them out so they could get some sleep. So one of the ways to mitigate this, they call it preloading, we're able to take several naps a couple of days prior to kind of reset your clock. And also on layovers, they want you to stay awake based on what your watch says and your current, um, your time zone back home and take those power naps. They really do help. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to seeing our fatigue risk management uh, for cabin crew course that you're working on now. I know yeah. that it'll incorporate a lot of this material. Oh, it will. Okay, for our ditching, uh, we can't call it a pool. We call it a, it's called a research tank. And we had to jump off the wing of an airplane into the water, not only wearing a life jacket, but also using the seat cushions, the seat bottom cushions. And we had to swim back and forth, tread water. And we had to learn several different new scenarios of how to preserve body temperature and body heat and different ways to set up a canopy and how to even use a helicopter rescue basket and even coming down to how we had to use and we learned how to use trash bags from the galley as a flotation device and also how to keep yourself nice and warm. So uh, you can see here in some of these photos, um, one of the middles called a burrito, which using a round uh, life raft. 
how to bring in a disabled or injured passenger. How do you roll them in and you float them above that little uh, boarding ladder and it takes two people to roll them in. You can see me, they were trying to roll me in. That was kind of fun. <laughs> uh, also with the basket, uh, we all had to go into this basket and be spun around and be raised about 30 feet and then back lower. Because if you ditch the water, you'll probably be rescued by helicopter or if it's close enough on shore. They wanted everybody to experience that. And you can see here at the lower right hand side, how to use a trash bag for both flotation and how to stay warm. That kind of surprised me. So uh, the snake, the huddle, the clip on, the clip on very quickly is we all gather in a circle and we all clip onto each other with our uh, life jackets. That way no one really floats away. That's something that is coming down and will be taught uh, later on. The FAA realized this is a good way to keep people from floating away. What's really interesting for me, Stephen, and I know you're going to be again updating our, our ditching courses for cabin crew. You know, I've seen you teach this course in our previous life at the at the uh, 142 airline level. And right. and so for you to say I learned a lot from this course and I've seen you teach this course hundreds of times. So, you know, it's great that we're, we're seeing some some methodology. I like this trash bag methodology. I'd be interested to see that in, the, in a lesson. Um, right. Let's uh, I know we've got just we're trying to make sure we've got to, a couple more minutes before we have to go to questions. Yep. So let's move through this, but let's go I'll ahead. I'll move through this very quickly. Uh, we did three evacuations, one for practice, one for dark, one at a smoke-filled cabin. And going down the slides, it was interesting because with the door open in the Oklahoma daylight, I could not see the door or the opening with all that smoke until I was about 10 or 12 feet from the door. So there's a new procedure. They're teaching how to evacuate. They want you to keep low. They want you to put your hand on the back of the person in front of you. Uh, until you get to the door. There's also new ways they want us to evacuate. Uh, they don't want us to be laying on our back and you know have our arms crossed or doing this anymore. They want your hands out in a seated position. If we had time, I'd show a video as to how that really is working out. That's incredible, Stephen. And, 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 and nobody was injured, I take it. So proper evacuation, everybody got through it healthy and, right. and safe. Uh, yeah. We had 40 people go down that slide in about 45 seconds. It was amazing. We had going down two at a time. Really amazing. Learned a lot from it. I've gone down slides many, many, many times. I really have never done it from a real aircraft like that. Yeah. Great experience. Right. I, I know we're getting towards the end here, Stephen, so I wanted to give you a chance on this last subject before we go to questions. Oh, okay. Uh, very quickly, they have a cabin uh, fire simulator where we're able to put out... Uh, laboratory fires, PED fires, laptop fires, and so on. And the FAA has said, we hear about fire containment bags or fire bags. They don't approve them. They're out there. You can buy them retail. Uh, some of the procedures are changing. For example, real quickly, what if the captain is out of the cockpit using the laboratory and the first officer's laptop catches fire? Now what do we do? Yeah. And there's a whole procedure for that. Uh, yeah. which All we'll right. get to when we update some of our training material. But really an awesome experience. Uh, I encourage anybody to be able to attend this. It's free uh, to attend from the FAA, but of course your hotel car and so on is not included. But there you go. I'll yeah. turn it back over to Greg. Yeah, and if if you'd like some more information on this workshop, again, it's 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 worldwide. It's available to anywhere in the, anybody in the world that would like to attend. Um, just send Stephen an email, um, and we'll uh, we will have that uh, contact, or send me an email, and we'll get you the the information uh, for the workshop um, because we think it benefits everybody. And that we're trying to be good stewards and pass on what we think is beneficial. So um, we, we've gone through a lot of material, Stephen. We've got uh, um, a couple of questions here in the, in the thing. Uh, remember folks, I, I really appreciate you spending the time with us today. If you have any questions, um, if you can just submit it through the, the chat here, we'll answer them. I've got one question now, um, or you can always contact, uh, send us an email and we'll uh, set up a one-on-one -on -one discussion with you as well as a trial or demo of any of this material you'd like to see. Um, Stephen, I got a question for you. Um, sure. uh, so for, for our airline, we have a few applications that wash out during training in the first week. How can, uh, can I utilize these systems as you talk about to help alleviate this washout rate um, that is costing us a lot of money? 
Um, what, uh, and, and so sort of both the augmentation question or scenario and the screening scenario, why don't you mm -hmm. talk about how that could help reduce the, the failure rate of their or washout rate of their, of their new hires? Yeah, so the issue is if they complete, if they go through the entire course, however many hours it might be, and if they do not score well, okay, they have washed themselves out without really any of us having to deliver the bad news. I'm sorry we had to dismiss you from training. Your test scores are not up there where they needed to be. So we can alleviate them from being in a classroom for five days. They do it at home over the five days. Again, like we said before, it frees up the uh, facilitator, frees up the classroom, frees up the assets. Uh, and they could pretty much, I like to call it self-screening, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and again, right. you could do that pre-employment or, you know, or pre-class for people that you've already done a job offer to or a conditional right. job offer to. Exactly. Um, well, well um, I, at this point, Stephen, we're coming to the end of our webinar. Um, and I'll give anybody that would like to raise their hand or submit a question a, a moment or two more. But uh, um, I, I, at this point, we don't have any more questions right at the moment. But I just want to say thank you to everyone for attending. My contact information is here. Um, if, you, if you have any questions, comments, things you'd like to see in future Discover webinars, let us know. Our, our whole goal is to provide value and support to our airline clients and our airline colleagues at, uh, around the industry. But um, I, I'll let Stephen sign us off. And again, thank you. Um, but uh, uh, Stephen, thank you for your time also. Oh, you're quite welcome, Greg. It's been a great pleasure delivering this. And if you all have any questions or concerns, uh, my contact information is on the, uh, the CPAC website and be glad to answer those for you. All right, folks, thank you. I have a wonderful day and everyone fly safe. We'll, we'll see you really soon.